I started at the Globe in 1981, the day Ronald Reagan was shot, and Betsy started in 1982. So we were basically young, general assignment reporters who were kind of in the same class, and we kind of found each other. She was a daughter, she was a sister, she was a mother, she was a wife, she was an excellent friend. You know, all together in one pretty remarkable person. Betsy was a very bright, uh, a very compassionate, uh, uh, enthusiastic person, good reporter. She had the respect of the Boston medical community because the reporting was so thorough. Betsy approached her own treatment the way she would if she were reporting a column for, for readers in general. Betsy Lehman had advanced breast cancer. She was receiving high-dose chemotherapy. Betsy thought she was having an atypical response. She was actually frustrated with the institution over a lack of response to her concerns. On the day before discharge, she died. How can this be? Because she was at the end of her chemotherapy. She was reportedly doing well. She was planning to go home and celebrate Hanukkah with her children. And it was just totally out of the blue. Uh, I mean, we knew that the treatment was rigorous, but we thought she'd already gone through the worst of it and, and pulled through. After Betsy's death, there was uh, no indication that an error had occurred. It was a few months after in February of 1995, a data manager entering information on Betsy into a protocol system noticed she received four times the chemotherapy she should have received. Weeks later, I got um, called into that room over there by Nils Berzelius, who was the health and science editor at the time. And we sat down, he said, I have to tell you something, it's gonna be a shock. And he said, Betsy was, suffered from a massive overdose and that's what killed her. Um, and I think it was um, evident to both of us immediately that we would have to report this. In 1994, I was an assistant commissioner for public health. Did routine, inspections of healthcare facilities and also did investigations of healthcare facilities. I found out about the incident by reading the Boston Globe. It became quite clear and really was kind of news to us as well that healthcare was not as safe as everyone thought it was, even in a medical mecca like Massachusetts. In the uh, aftermath of what happened at Data Farber, we had a number of reports come forward of serious incidents that were occurring, adverse outcomes that were occurring to patients in some of our best hospitals, um, some of the very best hospitals in Massachusetts. And if you looked, you would find, and you'd find deaths. Betsy's death was really a watershed event. Um, before that, some of us had been talking about the problem, but not many people were listening or interested. Uh, neither the public nor the medical profession thought that medical error was a problem. Um, the prevailing culture was to not talk about it. Uh, it was considered, uh, you know, a human failing, and therefore we don't we don't want to tell other people that we're less than perfect, and we don't want to blame others, and so. It was really a, a conspiracy of silence, not, not as trying to prevent people from knowing anything, but just because it just wasn't seemed the right thing to do. The consequences of our mistakes are borne by the patients. We've had a culture that is a, a, opposed to change and opposed to outside interference. That is, we, don't, we have never felt that anybody else was qualified to tell us how to do things, thank you very much. And, um, and on the other hand, we think we do a pretty good job and we like the way we're doing it. Uh, we're very much invested in the status quo and we have a very hierarchical system which perpetuates that. And so what we're really talking about is how do you change that? My vision is first that we set a bold aim. The bold aim is that we commit to reducing 
preventable harm to zero in the Commonwealth. I would like to see us become much more focused on foundational systems to improve safety across all hospitals and across all care settings in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I think it's important that a center like the Betsy Lehman Center be named after a person because it's a reminder that these preventable medical errors happen to real people and that they interrupt real lives. But I think it's a mistake to only associate her name with the tragic way in which she died. And to me and the people who knew and loved Betsy, the name Betsy Lehman is about a whole life and a whole life that was lost, a whole life that was interrupted. You know, if this can happen to a patient like Betsy, we're all vulnerable. <laughs>